everybody and welcome to another episode of Let's Talk About. This is me, Amin. And this is Alex. And in today's episode, we're going to talk about Apple's biggest, boldest, bravest move. The change from Intel processors to its own uh, homemade processor called the M1. What's it called? Apple Silicon, right? Yeah, Apple Silicon. So, uh, they made an announcement, I think, what? A couple of weeks back, uh, they announced a full range of Macs from uh, the Mac Mini all the way up to the MacBook Pro all running Apple Silicon. Uh, it, the chip is called the M1. Uh, Apple promised earlier this year that they will have... Well, well number one, they promised earlier this... Uh, they announced earlier this year that they were working on their very own uh, processors mm, running the ARM architecture. We'll talk about that uh, later. And they also promised that they will have the Apple Silicon uh, devices launch uh, this year. So, obviously... 2020, despite the pandemic and everything, has been a super busy year for Apple. They've launched the most number of iPhones, uh, I, uh, as much as far as I could remember. They have uh, they launched uh, a couple of new iPads, uh, a couple of new Apple Watches, and uh, a new operating system, the Big Sur, and now four new computers running on a new, completely new processor. It's a huge leap for Apple. Obviously, they're doing a lot of uh, work. Um, so, in their mobile devices and Apple Watches and everything is fine. Uh, I think the, app, uh, the iPhone 12 is one of the best uh, iPhone series you could, could get. Uh, uh, you have the iPhone Mini, iPhone 12 Mini, and all the way to iPhone 12 Pro Max. Uh, that's good. The Apple Watch, they've, they've brought down the price. They've increased the features. Uh, really gr great. The new iPad, uh, the new iPad Air is 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 cheap and it's running the uh, iPhone uh, processor, the latest processor. What's it called? Again? The A14 Bionic. The A14 Bionic processor. The reason why I'm mentioning all this is that Apple is great at doing all mobile stuff, mobile devices. And the connection here is the M1 processor that's running on Apple Silicon is also running on a mobile processor architecture, it's ARM. The big question that everybody has on the, in their mind is that will the new Apple MacBooks running or Apple computers running the M1 processor be better than Intel? Obviously, uh, we watched the presentation, Alex watched the presentation, uh, the claims were out of this world, right, in terms of processor uh, processing power, performance. Mm -hmm and also battery life. So what, what, what did they reveal when they announced the Apple M1 machines? Okay, so uh, not very far off from the A14 Bionic chip. So this uh, new M1 is based on a five nanometer uh, process. So that ensures better efficiency and all that. And also the way it's being structured. So in, in, in a normal computer setup, right, you have the processor, you have the RAM, and everything separated. So this comes in a single chip, SOC, mm. similar to what you get on a smartphone. So in this one single chip, you get the CPU, you get the GPU, you get the neural engine inside, which actually helps in terms of, uh, of uh, AI processing. But the greatest thing about this is that uh, Apple claims that it gives them like a big leap in terms of performance compared to the Intel-based processor. Mm. And another biggest highlight is the battery life, because like we've seen during the presentation, right, they're boasting like 20 hours of battery life for the MacBook Pro mm. and up to 18 hours on the MacBook Air. And this are actually the same device as the previous Intel processor. It's the same uh, computer, same laptop. Mm. The only difference is it's a different chip. Mm. You still get the same uh, battery. So that's quite a phenomenal thing. But the biggest thing about, the biggest question right now is, do you lose out compared to Intel? Mm. What's the difference? Mm. Because um, this is not the first time that a computer manufacturer uses ARM for their devices. Okay. Remember the Surface RT? <laughs> or whatever that <laughs> that's called, that's running like a ARM version of Windows. That's mm. a total mess. Yep, it's terrible. Uh, yeah, and like I, I remember it, but I would really like to forget about it. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's that's part of Windows that Microsoft wants you to forget as yeah. well. So uh. just recap. Uh, normally on a Windows computer, right, you get the proper apps. You have the start run button and all that. But for Windows RT, it's like the watered down version. At first glance, it looks like a normal Windows interface. Mm. But I notice that there's no start run. So you can't like install executive uh, executable files like usual. You're limited to the Windows Store, which is very limited. Mm. So you got problems with apps and all that. Mm. So a lot of people are asking, you know, will this be a problem for Apple? Well, for me, the answer is yes and no. 
Mm. What do you think? Uh, well, it's number one too early to tell. So uh, a lot of the questions came back. Running the M1 processor means Apple has to shift a lot of things. Uh, they have to create a new operating system to be able to run on the processor. They, they, all their in-house applications need to be redeveloped to be able to run on the new processor. And what that also means is that a lot of uh, people will have problems. If you're jumping on the M1 machines, uh, you're not going to be able to run a lot of the applications that you're familiar with. That's not Apple. I mean, you can, but it's going to be uh, on an emulator. Uh, this emulator is called the Rosetta 2. Uh, Apple claims that the Rosetta 2 emulator is robust. Uh, you're not going to see a lot of performance degradation if you run uh, an application that's supposed to run on an Intel machine, like, uh, for example, Adobe Photoshop. Yep. Um, so that runs on an Intel machine. The, uh, Adobe has not developed a specific application for the M1 machines yet. So for you to be able to run Adobe Photoshop on the M1 machine, the M1 has to run like a layer that looks like an Intel machine, and then it works. So obviously there's some performance penalties there. So, if the, so the more applications you run, the more softwares you run that don't support M1 and rely on Rosetta, it's gonna be a major problem. So for me, the question is, do you wanna jump? Do you wanna make that, that leap? And then uh, because it's developed on a mobile architecture and everything is, is on a single chip, Apple says that, hey, this uh, allows us to have a lot of performance benefit. What I feel is that it's hiding the inherent limitation of every, having everything on a single chip. Uh, if you notice during the announcement, uh, the memory uh, capacity and the RAM capacity of all the M1 machines are much lower or at least half of what's available as options on the Intel powered machines. They are the same computers, the only difference is the processor um, and the Intel processors can run at least double the RAM and the storage. So for me, that is a big like uh, red flag. Uh, the other thing I wanted to highlight was uh, GPUs. So uh, a lot, a lot of questions came out. It's like, oh, Apple uh, M1. The, the the reason why uh, everything is integrated is because you want to have better performance. Blah blah blah. Mm -hmm. I, I and again, I think that's hiding something. Obviously, having if you're running uh, high uh, high definition video editing, you are running high definition design work, a lot of layers and everything like that. You know, having a dedicated uh, graphic processor unit makes a huge difference when it comes to processing and rendering all these files that you have. Uh, running it on a single chip, uh, for me, produces a lot of problems, heating, uh, processing limitations, and everything like that, and not being able to have an option to have a GPU in your machine if you're running a, a MacBook Pro, uh, if you're running design, is a major, could be, could be a major problem. At least it's an indication for me that is going to be a major problem. What, what, what I feel is during the presentation, all these bogus, not bogus, all these bold claims about performance benchmark scores and, 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 and battery life, because Apple came out and said, oh, you know, the best, the biggest benefit of the M1 is battery. Mm -hmm. Obviously, battery life is going to be a big benefit because everything is, is, is parked in one single chip. You're, 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 it's more efficient. It's efficient. Yeah. You're, you're using less power to run all the other things that's outside of the chip. Obviously, you know, that's, that's obvious. But the problem is right now, is battery life so important that I'm willing to sacrifice out and out performance? Yes, there are reports that put out the benchmark scores are ridiculously fast and, and everything, but benchmark scores are not real life. But another thing is that, um, okay, so apart from battery life, right, it's mm. about the efficiency as well, because they claim that the M1 has the industry leading performance per watt, mm. because they show like a graph chart, right, how much power you need. Mm. So like the peak performance you get on an Intel-based processor, you can get the same performance for less power. So mm. it gives you room to grow. But another thing about it is that if you think about it, right, since it's like a mobile processor, right, mm. most of these performance figures are based on apps that are optimized for the M1. So essentially these apps are like running mobile apps. Mm. So if you look at the claims of like 20 hours per, per full charge on MacBook Pro, you look at the fine print, it's actually based on running Apple TV videos. Yep. So that, those could be like a, like a running like a mobile apps, mm. if you think about it. Mm. And of course, watching videos are less CPU intensive. Mm. So obviously you can push 20 hours. Yeah, well, what's the, what are the benefits here? Um, obviously, 
Apple is big on the ecosystem and, I, and when I talk about uh, Apple, why I like using Apple devices and Apple machines is because the ecosystem is just so complete and you're in it and, and it's so convenient and, 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 and they do take care of their users. They, they provide support, they provide um, uh, uh, software uh, upgrades uh, and it's, it's good. And the M1 is designed with Apple Silicon and running in this ecosystem makes integration of the iPad, the iPhone, uh, the Apple TV, the Apple Watch, everything more seamless. It allows Apple another degree of control in their ecosystems across their machines. But don't forget, the M1 is a first generation device. Uh, a lot of people have been pointing out that you know Apple's not doesn't have a good track record when it comes to making first generation device. Uh, uh, what are some problems? Um, I remember uh, the AirPod Pro has problems. Uh, apparently, the Rory tells me the Apple Watch, the first generation or the the, the generation zero, has has a problem, so they killed it really quickly. Um, but on the flip side, Apple also makes a lot of first generation products that work, like the, the first generation iPad. I think it's one of the best products Apple has ever made. So. The, the question is, do, do, do you want to get into, and, and it's also a bit suspect because Apple also still have the Intel options available. I think what's going what's gonna, to what's gonna happen is that Intel machines are going to hold their prices very, very well. Yep. Uh, even the secondhand ones because I, I'm, not, I'm not really confident with these with this M1 machines. Well, again, I'm, I'm just running word processors, spreadsheets and everything on my computer. And, and that's the reason why I'm running a MacBook Air. I don't need that much processor, but you know, running the applications that's developed for Intel makes it more efficient. I, I could argue that it makes it more efficient than running uh, an Apple uh, M1 machine with Windows that needs to run on an emulator. Also in terms of like um, software support, right? Mm. So it's interesting to note that this is not the first time that Apple has made a shift from different architectures. Mm. Because before they jumped to Intel, they were running on like uh, Power, Power PCs. PC. I believe it's made by Motorola. Motorola, yes. Yeah, so when they did that, they also have their Rosetta Stone. So mm. the migration, well, is pretty seamless compared to what other operations have done. Yep, yep. They've done, they've definitely done a better job than Microsoft. Yeah, I, I wouldn't argue that, yeah. you know, that, 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 the, that the thing is not going to be seamless. Mm. I would agree and I have confidence in that. but. I feel that there's not enough flexibility or there's not enough room if you are somebody that's running a MacBook Pro and really need the power I, I, and, and you're going to use this machine to you know, work and this is something that you're going to... It's a tool that's going to... It's a tool for, for you to produce things that, 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 that you make a living out of. And that's a big risk running an M1, I think. Yeah, but I, I believe that most of the core Apple applications, most of the popular ones, I think they will be readily available by end of this year. Mm. Uh, Adobe has also released a, like a sort of like a roadmap. So Lightroom will be the first app that will be like fully compatible with the M1 mm. and Photoshop is coming up early next year. Mm. But of course, there are some apps that we always use which are not available yet, like for example, Adobe Premiere. Yep. So if you're using Final Cut Pro, I'm pretty sure that Final Cut Pro should be ready on day one. Yeah. So all those native Apple apps, if you're used to it, you shouldn't be, be having a problem. Yeah, but the thing is, a lot of people, I don't know, I, a lot of people don't use uh, native Apple apps. Yes, like I mentioned, if you're in the ecosystem, that's great. You're taken care of. Great, you know, you can do your editing on your iPad and whatever, whatever it works. But if you're running um, Adobe Premiere, yeah. and if you guys are running Premiere, uh, I know, you know, Zachary, Rory, uh, all my editors are running Premiere and they are losing hair because that's how often the Premiere crashes for no bloody reason. And here's the thing, it runs on Intel. Mm -hmm. So what I'm trying, my point is, even on Intel, and it's optimized for Intel, and it's, it's a software that's like, a uh, software and, and, and um, processor that's very well known, very well used, Adobe still has problems. I think when it moves to M1, uh, I think Zachary is going to be bald. But the thing is, is that an Apple problem? I think it's Adobe because even a Windows machine, right? It's not stable, it's crap. So that's not Apple problem, developer problem. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that's Apple's, uh, I mean, they, they like to say that. La, but yeah, so I think that's, okay. So I guess that's the reason why mm. App, uh, Apple's not doing like a complete, you know, switch over to 
M1 or Apple Silicon processor straight away. Mm. If you look at how they're doing it, right, they're doing at the entry level segment. So people mm. who just use a computer just to browse the web, no, no, check no. Facebook. I got I to I draw the line there. Uh, I don't think a MacBook Pro is the entry level though. But they are the the switch is only for the entry level MacBook Pro because as you know MacBook Pro there's two versions. So that's for the poses lah. Yeah. So <laughs> once one look, I guess no, um, no offense for that for those who bought a MacBook Pro 13. Take offense. It's a freaking for for poses. Yes. So basically, okay. So essentially, there are two different models for the MacBook Pro lineup. Mm. They always they always differentiate this way. Poser edition and and really people doing work yeah. edition. Yeah. So okay on that on that on that, on if that context right. So people who really want to do work right. Mm. You go for the high spec model that comes with four ports, so you have two on ports left. On the M1, left. you're talking about, or the Intel one? MacBook Pro. MacBook Pro, Intel. All the while, MacBook Pro, Intel. Oh. Before this, oh, okay, okay. all the while there's always two specs. Uh-huh. Yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes. The one who really do work mm. gets the four port version. So uh-huh. you have two ports on the left and four and two ports on the right. Mm. And before this announcement, mm. that that's running on the latest te- on the newer 10 gen Intel processor. Okay. For those posers out there who mm. just want to look for MacBook Pro, uh-huh. there's the low spec version. With so the two ports. With two ports yeah. and it runs on the older 8 gen Intel. Like 8 mm. gen. In 2020, who wants to buy that? Yeah, Poser Edition. Yeah, so so what in, so what Apple did is that they replaced that Poser Edition with uh-huh. the M1 because anyway, you're just gonna use it's Poser Edition. Yeah, I just want to use it for watching YouTube and all that, right? For, for <laughs> watching YouTube, yeah, for watching Netflix, uh, not really doing work. Yeah, so that's why I guess they're doing an entry level. So like, look at the MacBook Air, right? Mm. Before this new M1 was released, right? It's running on like a pseudo Intel Core processor, mm. not a really core processor. Not this one, okay? This, this is, is a, a yeah. Really, yeah. Why processor? Yeah. Mm. That's why it's sluggish. Good, no, no, it's not You've been struggling with video fine, calls, fine. man. <laughs> so, this, we used to joke about it, right? Like, I, I believe the iPad Pro can, can perform much no, better than this. No, video calls is COVID problem. If there was no COVID, <laughs> I, wouldn't have need, I wouldn't need to run any video calls on it. And it's fine. Yeah, you want to solve a problem? Don't run video calls. <laughs> Yeah, so how bad can it be? So I'm not surprised Intel said, oh, the new M1 is like three times faster than O1 because the O1 is just sluggish. It's like 4,000 bucks and then it performs worse than a 2,000 ringgit Windows laptop. Excuse me, it's not. It's good, man. The ecosystem. I, you know, I can buy a 2,000 ringgit Windows, but you know, I, can, I don't have the, the universal uh, clipboard. But you can run that's, video that's calls with no problems. That's definitely worth 2,000 ringgit. <laughs> <laughs> the universal clipboard. You know the amount of things I copy and paste from my phone to my computer seamlessly? It's a lifesaver. <laughs> uh, for me, I won't spend too much money for a MacBook Air. Yeah. But so, so essentially, I think Apple is taking the right step by taking baby steps by focusing on the entry level devices before to move on to the higher aspect devices. Yeah. yeah. Okay, baby steps. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. That, I don't know what, what do you mean by baby steps because uh, this is the first step. Yeah, I mean to, to target the posers, not the hardcore <laughs> users, right? Because if you are into, you know, heavy production, like doing for music, for video production, right? You want something that's stable and proven. So you can you should stick along with your Intel and based you need computers. Power, yes. Right? Okay. So speaking of baby steps, uh, the M1 has a lot of limitations. We talked about limitations, but specifically for creators and people who use Macs for like real work, uh, again, editing and 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 processing, uh, the M1, I think, falls flat. Yeah, so a, a couple of things that... Do yeah, not it doesn't support a lot of things, right? Yeah. yeah. And like the first one would be uh, if you need to use like a, uh, a better... Sorry, another thing is if you need like a really powerful graphic processing hardware, uh, you can't use it for eGPUs. Mm. It's a Thunderbolt port with USB 4, but you can't plug in uh, eGPUs, like external graphic cards. Mm. And another thing is for those who like to run a two operating system, like dual boot, Windows and Mac, mm. well, it doesn't, it's not supported because mm. this is an ARM processor. Yeah. yeah. So th- those are inherent limitations in the ARM architecture. Uh, whatever you do, you, you, you can't overcome that. Um, for dual booters, I guess uh, you might be happy that it, uh, it supports Linux, <laughs> if, if that works for you guys. So again, a lot of people who run Macs, uh, they do a lot of crazy stuff uh, and these are critical. So a lot of uh, day-to-day users like me and, and I think everybody here, we are not even scratching the surface of what people use Max for. Uh, they, they run uh, mainframes and everything. Uh, dual booting is important because they run terminals uh, and they prefer to use Mac because of the ecosystem. So those limitations are critical for people who really rely on these features to do work. And now they are kind of like stranded because, you know, hey, they're... No, actually, okay, they're not like really stranded. Yep. If you just bought like a Intel powered uh, Mac, I think you're going to be supported for at least another three years with the new uh, operating systems, not really an issue. Uh, 
Uh, I guess that comes to our next point. Uh, do you or should you jump to an M1 machine? And if you say yes, which M1 machine are you going to get? So I'm going to ask this to you. Would you jump on an M1 machine? For me, I'll take a wait and see approach. So if I have to buy an Apple uh, machine, I'll yep. rather wait. And of course, if you're a power user, you want to get a MacBook Pro 16, well, there's no option right now because the there's M no M1 option. There's no M1 option. But M1 there options. is an Intel option. There's an Intel option yeah. right now. And if let's say if you're going for the, the cheaper MacBook Pro 13, mm. uh, if you want, you want to be on the safe side, you you still can get the Intel-based version, the 10-gen version. Yeah. Yeah, that's get the Apple. expensive version yeah, with of the, the four MacBook ports. Pro. Yeah, Pro. and that allows you to like install like 32 gigs of RAM and like I think 4 terabytes of storage, which is much more. Because on the M1 machines, you're limited to a maximum of 16 gigs of RAM and mm. 2 terabytes of storage. Mm. Yeah. Again, uh, a lot of people are asking that question, why is Apple not offering uh, a, the same storage and RAM options as the Intel uh, machines? And obviously, they're not going to answer that question. Uh, they just say, oh, you know, you have options. You want to choose the, the not lower variant, but you want to choose less RAM or more RAM. It's up to you. We give you that choice. The answer and the correct answer is that the ARM architecture has a lot of limitations. At the heart of it, the DNA of the ARM architecture is a mobile processor. And at that heart is lack of multi-application, true multi-application support. A lot of support for basic stuff that computer users need, like running dual boot, uh, uh, having the power to run uh, uh, external GPU, that's not available. So the question I posed to Alex was, if, are you going to jump on an M1? And if you are jumping on M1, which machine are you going to get? Obviously, Alex is saying he's not jumping on any M1 machine at this point in time. Then, then I bring the question back to me. Um, yes, for my work machine, I'm not going to get a M1 Mac. But there is one Mac that I'm quite curious about and something I think I want to try. That is the Mac Mini. Running, uh, so Mac Mini is like a casual computing device. It's a computer that you have at your home for sometimes casually browsing Facebook, watching YouTube, doing some work. If it's, uh, if it's an application that's browser-based, I think it's safe to run on an, on an M1 uh, based on my understanding or based on what I see, right? So because of that, I am curious and I'm actually quite close to getting a Mac Mini that's, that runs on the M1. Obviously, I don't have the benefits that Apple touts because, hey, the Mac Mini doesn't run on battery. I don't need it's efficiency in terms of power. Mm -hmm. um, but I like the simplicity. So if you, are, you know, maybe we'll talk about this in our next episode, but uh, Apple's new operating system, the Mac's new operating system, the Big Sur, uh, the biggest benefit that it brings to the table is more seamless integration between all of Apple mobile devices and uh, Apple's computers. So if you are running on Big Sur, you can see a number of things that resemble more like the mobile uh, applications than a computer itself. So Apple is trying to like blur the line between what is an iMac, what is a Mac, eh, sorry, iMac, what is an iPad, what is a Mac, and what is an iPhone. And because of that, I like the Mac Mini because uh, uh, it's for my kids and um, relatively it's cheaper. It's a, the cheapest entry point for a Mac computer available today, I think. And also it's much cheaper than the previous um, Mac, Mac Mini, Mini that's running yeah. Intel. Yeah. Previously it was priced at 3,449 ringgit. Yeah. So now it's like 450 ringgit cheaper. So it starts from 2999 yeah. with 8 gigs of RAM and 256 gigs of storage. Yeah, and the reason why I want to run a Mac Mini, I'm curious about running a Mac Mini is because I have peripherals already at home. I have a, a, a display mm. that I plug in my Mac on, uh, to. I have keyboards, I have mouse, so I just need like a CPU and it's good that because if I have a Mac Mini at home, that means I don't have to take my MacBook Air out of my bag when I go home. I'll just run it off the Mac Mini because the ecosystem is so great. So, so to answer your question, if I'm, am I going to get an M1 machine? Uh, yeah, I'm going to get a Mac Mini because I'm curious about it, but I don't recommend you getting anything else if you want to do work, right? Yep, so if you want to be safe, go for the Intel one for now, yeah. until at least they sort out the app issue. Yeah, and let's hope they do it uh, quickly. Uh, it's an experiment for Apple, and obviously the people who jump on this first generation stuff are 
they are guinea pigs. So, but you know, I guess it's a model that works because people come back. I mean, you know, you you work with uh, flawed products, you try it out, and you see the potential, and you come back to it. Like for me, uh, the, Gal- the Galaxy Suit Four is a good example. Um, yeah, there is a lot. There are a lot of flaws with the f- uh, fold, but I like it because I see the potential, and I've just moved from my uh, f- uh, Galaxy Fold to uh, Galaxy Z Fold. Too, because I, I see the potential. Okay, I think we are almost uh, at the end of the show. We didn't actually cover the reason why Apple moved to um, the Apple Silicon pro- processors. Yeah. Uh, why did they do that? Why didn't they just continue with Apple, Intel and just push Intel and say, hey, Intel, you know, we're selling so many computers, <laughs> you better buck up and, and improve your performance or else we're going to take our business away. I guess that's one of the obvious reasons because I think I believe uh, when they started off the presentation they've been shouting about how much performance leap they have and they claim that this is the biggest leap ever for the entire Mac they lineup. They always say that yeah. in I any mean, presentation. I mean the biggest leap for the generation. <laughs> okay. And on top of that um, there was like an interview with one, one of the former Intel engineers um, apart from having like a very small incremental upgrades for every Intel generation um, a huge issue that Apple face is bad quality control. So apparently they have issues with their like Skylake processors. So it's giving them a lot of problems. So mm. that I believe has delayed their production of their MacBooks. Mm. So I guess Apple is just fed up. You know what? Forget this thing. Let me just make my own processor and I have full control for both hardware and software. Because they've done the same thing for, for the smartphone and the iPad. It's a logical step for them to do so with the MacBooks. Yeah, uh, and you know what, if this is not like a punch in the face for Intel, I don't know what is. Intel has been resting on their laurels like for donkey years. <laughs> yeah. AMD has been coming up uh, with like really good processors. Uh, the the Ryzen, Ryzen is yes. crazy and they came from nowhere. And, and, uh, and they're already like on the 5 nanometer processing, right? The Ryzen, I can't remember, but what I, what I can say is that Intel is still like on some obscure processing nanometer. <laughs> I can't remember the number <laughs> right now. But the thing is, App, uh, Intel is not moving. They're like, hey, you know what? You know, we have, we have, we have processors. They are good. They, they can still fight with Ryzen. And we're, we're selling them uh, more expensively. It's okay. People still buy our stuff. And if this is not a punch in their face, I don't know what is. So the, 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 the plot twist of the story is it's possible that Intel is like, you know what, you know, Apple, thank you for trying this M1 experiment. It's not, it's hard, you know, you're going to spend a lot of money. Why not you forget about that? We'll, we'll create processes that you want. So that, that could happen. I think it's too late. I guess when Apple started Apple Silicon, that's it, man. They missed the bus. Uh, but Apple did a number of U-turns, so I don't know. It's, it's still possible. I wouldn't... The fat lady is not singing yet on this. Well, the fact that they're launching the div- three devices already, right? I don't think they really passed the point of no return. So I think they're going ahead with this plan. And eventually, probably there'll be an M2 or something that, that's more powerful to power the 16-inch MacBook Pro and also the new iMac. So I feel that they will be ditching Intel for good because but they announced the transition plan of two years, I believe, during mm. the earlier keynote. Mm. Yeah. The, again, the ARM architecture is, it runs mainframes before. Uh, any yep. single processing is super efficient. I don't know how Apple is going to overcome that. Obviously, mm. we, we don't have a crystal ball to predict, but from our observation, it is a big ask for Apple to do this. And I think this is... At the very core, it, the most genuinely bold and brave thing Apple has done in so many years. I and, think mm. in since the iPad was launched. Yeah, and I, and like we said earlier, right? Uh, a lot of companies have done this. Uh, you've seen Microsoft done this. You've seen uh, Qualcomm coming out with ARM processors for laptops and all that. Those are not moving. And I guess Apple obviously is always the last to come out with these kind of uh, steps. But turns out they they do it better. So mm. I have faith that. Apple will sort this out. It's not an easy road for them, but I got a feeling we get in two years, this might be the future uh, future standard for computing. Yep. And with that, we wrap up the show. Uh, so the, 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 the takeaway from this is if you're going to buy M1, uh, wait, for, wait, wait two years from now and get the better one. Don't, don't invest in this uh, first-gen first product. Unless you're a poser. So if you are, then go ahead. <laughs> 
Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it. Again, guys, I uh, just want to remind everybody we're available on podcasts. Uh, just search for Soya Chin Chow on all of your favorite podcast platforms and we're there. Uh, look for Soya Chin Chow, let's talk about. If you're listening to us on podcast, give us a five-star rating because that helps us a lot in getting more re- listeners and, and, and getting the show become better and better, better right? Okay, uh, if you're watching, uh, watching us on YouTube, Give us a thumbs up if you like the show. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And finally, uh, um, last but not least, any comments, suggestions, discussions about today's topic, the M1 uh, machines from Apple, or about what shows we should, co- what topics we should cover in future episodes, or how we can improve the show. Just let us know. We love to hear from you guys. All right, uh, and that's pretty much it. This is Amin. And this Alex. Thanks for watching, guys. Catch you guys later. Bye. Bye.